Hi, my name is Piper Pamela, and the book that I'll be discussing today is The Book Thief by Marco Zusak. We meet a lot of main characters in the first half of this book. One of them is Liesl Memminger. Liesl is about nine years old at the beginning of the novel. She's skinny and pale. You learn that she was never really good at reading, but she loved books. Throughout her time at the Hubermans, her foster family, she learns to read and to open up. So far, I found that she likes to keep to herself, but she's very trusting and kind. She has nightmares almost every night, bringing her back to her brother's death on the train, and where she also stole her first book, The Gravedigger's Handbook. We next meet Hans Huberman. Hans is Liesl's foster father. He's a kind man who loves and treats Liesl very kindly. He loves to smoke, he's a painter, and he's married to Rosa. The narrator of the book describes him. To most people, Hans Huberman was barely visible. An unspecial person. Certainly his painting skills were excellent. His musical ability was better than average. Somehow though, and I'm sure you've, sure you've met people like this, he was able to appear as merely part of the background. Even if he was standing at the front of the line, he was always just there. Not noticeable not important or particularly valuable. This was taken from page 34 of the book. Hans was saved by Eric Vandenberg during World War I when he volunteered Hans to do a writing assignment instead of going to battle that day. No one returned, so when Hans got back home, he promised the Vandenbergs that if they ever needed anything, he would help them out. We next meet Rosa Huberman. Huberman. Rosa is Liesl's foster mom. She's very strict and uses foul language directed at both Liesl and Hans. She's about 5'1 and likes to wear her hair in a bun. She likes to hit or spank Liesl with her wooden spoon to get her back into shape. Rosa is married to Hans. She does laundry for her wealthier neighbors as her job. She doesn't like to show her love for others, but you can definitely tell that she loves both Hans and Liesl. We next meet Rudy Steiner. Rudy's about the same age as Liesl when the book starts. He's one of six Steiner children and befriends Liesl early in the book. He has bony legs, sharp teeth, ganko blue eyes, and the hair the color of a lemon. He's best known for his Jesse Owens stunt, where he painted himself black with charcoal and ran around the track after Jesse won the 1936 Olympics. Later in the book, Rudy and Liesl become best friends and partners in crime. You can tell that Rudy's in love with Liesl, but she wants nothing to do with it. Next, we meet Max Vandenberg, the son of Eric Vandenberg, who saved Hans' life back in World War I. Max was born in 1916 and grew up in Stuttgart. When he was around Liesl's age, he was known as the Jewish fist fighter because he loved to get into fights. When Max arrived at the Hubermans, he was very ill from hiding from the Nazi party. Max and Liesl became very good friends. The last main character that we meet in this half of the book is the narrator. We haven't really been given an explanation of who he is. I was confused at first on who he was, but soon realized that he was death. We see this in the first chapter of the book, when he's carrying the soul of someone away. I think that the writer did an amazing job portraying death the way he did by making him the narrator of the book, especially because it was during World War II where there's so much death happening. I read this book because I always heard such great things about it and I wanted to experience it for myself. I've always loved to read books about these kinds of stories. I feel as if they're more meaningful than other books. When I read this book, I feel like I'm being taken back into time and I'm reliving what Liesl and all the others are going through. As we get into this book, we find both merits and faults. The merits of this book are that it depicts a realistic representation of the Holocaust and portrays the emotional side of what was happening in Germany during this period of time. I couldn't really find a fault in this book. For me, it was paced perfectly to portray the information to the reader in a way that it's, it, that it's easy for you to understand. This book connects to the Holocaust in so many ways. 
The whole time period of this book was set in Germany during World War II when Hitler was in power. The book I feel takes two different sides of the Nazi party. We see the side where so many people who are brainwashed to love and do whatever Hitler does. We see this when it's his birthday and they have a huge fire where they burn all the books. You read about so many people who just stand there in amazement when they're being talked to about everything that Hitler's done for them. You also see Hitler's youth division were taught at such a young age how to act like they're in the army. For me to read about this makes me so sad because to know what was going on at that time outside of the book and knowing that some kids were forced into being part of Hitler's youth is so disturbing. Also, just knowing that all these kids were pitted against each other almost every day to see who was the best and who was not good was not good for them mentally. We also get to see the other side, where there are men and women who refuse to become brainwashed and they stand up for what they believe in. We see this with the Huber Hubermans when they take in Max and care for him. They decide to risk their lives to help someone in need. To see such humanity in so few people at the time must have been amazing. Many times throughout the Holocaust, we see so many people have to change uh, to try to survive. I feel as if the people who had to change who they were lost a part of themselves, especially when they had to go and hide in people's houses and they weren't allowed to see the sunlight for months at a time. I remember, remember when I first learned about the Holocaust, we read the poem Holocaust by Barbara Sonic. It went, we played, we laughed, we were loved. We were ripped from the arms of our parents and thrown into the fire. We were nothing more than children. We had a future. We were going to be lawyers, rabbis, wives, teachers, mothers. We had dreams. Then we had no hope. We were taken away in the dead of night like cattle and cars. No air to breathe smothering, crying, starving, dying, separated from the world to be no more. From the ashes, hear our plea. This atrocity to mankind cannot happen again. Remember us, for we were the children whose dreams and lives were stolen away. This poem had such a big impact on me because it made what happened really sink in and to realize that so many kids who were so young at the time were taken away from their parents to go and just die, to have people just send kids and parents to places where they know that they're going to die and that they know that they're going to be killed is just so amazing for me. Like, I can't wrap that around my head to think that someone has the ability and guts, I guess you could say, to watch people just starve and try to fight for their lives. And there's so much that you can do but you don't because you're so brainwashed by one person. This It's just so amazing to me just to think, like, all of those guards at those concentration camps, they took mothers from their kids. They, they tore families apart, and that just... It's so hard for me to understand why someone would do that. And... I guess by reading that poem and reading this book, it just, it breaks my heart just to realize that, like, there's so much pain and suffering going throughout this time that there's nothing that, like, really anyone could do about it. I mean, like, they were all so brainwashed by what Hitler, like, could do for them. Uh, which he couldn't really do anything for them. He was just hurting them more than he was helping them. It just, it makes me so upset to, like, think that someone like him could just, like, 
change the whole world and to like just change like germany and like make people believe that he's the best person in the whole entire world um when i was reading this book another part that came up was when liesel said that she hated him and her father got so scared that someone would hear because if someone heard her say that she probably would have died she would have gotten taken away um to see that like no one really had a voice during this period of time is so upsetting to me that I, it just makes me so upset that like you couldn't speak your mind you couldn't help people if you were caught like giving food to someone walking by you were attacked you were attacked for trying to stand up for someone you were arrested for no reason like they had they passed a law saying that you could arrest anyone without giving a reason just because they were like different than you were and that just makes me so upset and so reading this book and doing more research on it really opened up my brain and my way of thinking to realize I didn't really think about the kids being taken away from their families I didn't really think about the people who tried to help and who were punished uh, I didn't really think about any of that until really reading this book and doing more research on it I know I'm only halfway done with this book but I know that whoever reads this next is going to have such a big impact on it just to know that someone who could write this um ju it's just amazing like to get their side of the story and to like re almost relive this part of our history just the way that the author was able to portray each character in each way it was just so amazing that like i can't wait to finish this book um just to figure out what happens and what he does with each character to continue on and to finish the story. I've really enjoyed this assignment so far because being able to pick the book that I wanted to read that I had an interest in and to be able to do my own research on this and to be able to learn more and dig deeper then I don't know if we would have gone in class um, just to like dig deep dig deep into the past like look at all the stuff that is hard for people to look at just so I know that we can't let something like this ever happen again and that people like it for me it's scary to think that there could be another person who's like Hitler and who can raise up and just change people's minds just by talking and so this just gave me so much more awareness to that. I feel like most people need to read a book about the Holocaust or about any genocide really and just soak it all in and realize that something like this can never happen again. Um, overall, so far, The Book Thief has been an amazing book that I've been able to read. Um, I just want to recap on a few things about Liesl and her friendship with Rudy to be able to see something like that grow and have uh, and see so much faith in between each other to trust each other with so many secrets it's just amazing and to also see how the author made death the narrator is just it's really interesting it's an interesting point of view because you get to see what it's like for I mean death or however you want to call it to see what it was like for it during this time where he had to keep on going and like take people's souls away and just to see how invested he was in each story that he um, had when he carried the souls away and also to see the trust between Hans and Max uh, about keeping him there that's just amazing to see like how much humanity there is still left in Germany at this time and so yeah I hope you enjoyed this review of the first half of The Book Thief by Marcus Zusek. Um, thank you. I'll see you next week on the second installment of this where I discuss the second half of the book.